But I'd like to, uh, so thank you once again and hand over now to uh, Toddington Harper. Uh, Toddington is the chief exec of, of GridServe, another fantastically innovative UK company. I'm absolutely delighted that you've joined us here this afternoon now, Toddington. So thank you very much indeed um, for, for joining us. Uh, Toddington, like, like the other speakers, I'd like to ask an opening Gambit question and invite you to tell us a little bit more about GridServe, its mission, and perhaps your own personal mission uh, for your work. Sure, awesome to, uh, awesome to be here. Um, so yeah, GridServe. Um, GridServe's purpose, um, which is very aligned to my purpose, I, I founded GridServe, um, is to deliver sustainable energy um, really on such a scale that we can help move the needle on climate change. Um, and what, what do I mean by that? Um, Mike made the point that he's part of a commission, um, the you know, sorry, coalition, the one and a half degree coalition around global warming. And, and the thing that bothers me daily, and I just had a check before this, this session, is that we're, the world is on track to hit um, you know, uh, carbon emission concentrations in the atmosphere that's gonna drive the world beyond one and a half degrees of warming rather shockingly within around seven years from now. That there's a link which I hope you can share with the with, with, the, with the audience um, that correlates IPCC data uh, into a really visual format of a clock that ticks down, um, and you know, and, and that's an incredible issue and problem and challenge, and, and that isn't a challenge we can outsource to another generation. So you know, grid serves, you know, objective. Our plan is to deliver sustainable energy, at really such a magnitude. We, we, we do that across um, a number of different applications, both, both power and transport, which we're going to talk, talk about more. We, we primarily use low cost technologies to do this, like solar energy and, and energy storage. Um, but we're really trying to do it quickly. Um, and, you know, my, my personal mission, my personal objective, you know, Matt made the point really well. We are in a climate crisis. We, we, we know the problems that, um, that are coming. And if anyone hasn't seen the David Attenborough program, A Life on My Planet, I, I would I would encourage everyone to see it today. It's important, it's, it's daunting, but, uh, but also hopeful. And I want to be one of those people, I'm sure we all want to be, that in 10, 20, 30 years from now, we can say that we, we, we saw the problems were coming. It, were clear, it was clear, the IPCC uh, you know, told us the evidence. You know, people like Greta Thunberg did a wonderful job of, of uh, you know, helping people understand that we need to take action. And actually, you know, I want to be one of the people that say, we, we took action, we made it happen and, and, and we knocked it out of the park. So that's my personal mission and, and it's very aligned to, to grid serves. Thanks very much indeed, Toddington. Great to hear that passion in your voice about the, uh, the need for action around sustainability. So you've outlined what grid serve is all about as a business. I know you've been working on the super successful project of the electric forecourt. Um, tell us a little, bit, a little bit more about electric forecourt, your plans for the first one and your plans for the future rollout of electric forecourt. Yeah, sure. So we are, um, you know, to, to, to kind of facilitate a mass change, it's really important that um, we remove any reasons why people wouldn't want to transition to, uh, to electric vehicles. Um, we take away all of the anxiety, we replace it with a positive experience. And we also ensure that the energy that people are using has to be, you know, zero carbon or, you know, at the very least net zero. Um, and so what we're doing is we're helping to develop a UK wide network there's a combination of solutions that are necessary for charging that I completely agree with everything anybody, everybody said so far, charging at home if you can, charging at the workplace, et cetera, et cetera. But in addition to that, we need really, really robust public charging infrastructure that just isn't going to be an issue, is going to work and is going to work well and critically is net zero. And so that's, um, that's what we're talking about. We, we've given it, a simple, given it a simple name. We call it an electric forecourt. Um, and, you know, it's, it's very, very visual. Um, and really, we, we hope it's a big part of the solution to to give people the absolute confidence that now is the time to transition. There are no disadvantages. Uh, in fact, there's many, many advantages, in including cost. You know, I would concur with, with what Charlie was saying. Actually, you can deliver net zero, you know, not, not just electric vehicles, but net zero uh, vehicles today that can outcompete um, uh, petrol and diesel cars. And we're about to do exactly that next month. So maybe Aid, you could uh, show one of the pictures. So, um, yeah, so this is about a year ago. And again, it's very important that we, that we, we deliver collectively. About a year ago, we, we said, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to build a network of over 100 electric forecourts across the UK. Um, they're going to be powered by sustainable energy. Um, it's going to make it as easy for anybody to charge an electric vehicle without any disadvantages at all, many advantages. And, and this is precisely what we're doing. So if you can kind of move to, to the next slide. Um, 
this is, you know, this is a picture as of around uh, three weeks ago. Um, and hopefully people can see the correlation between those two pictures that we've done what we said we were going to do. Um, and, you know, it, it really is uh, incredibly exciting. Uh, and just a little bit more than that, if we can go to the next slide on, on top of that. Um, in addition to that infrastructure, I mentioned it's so important that we provide net, you know, zero energy as well. So in addition to building electric forecourt, we also have a, have a solar farm, which we pair in the background, because um, there's quite a lot of solar power on site. But in addition to that, we have a solar farm that produces a huge amount of energy that every kilowatt hour that, that, it, that will be used to charge vehicles will either be provided by a zero carbon kilowatt hour that we produce uh, on site, um, or a net, you know, or we net it off against a, a, a zero carbon kilowatt hour that we in, in, input into the grid about 44 miles up the road. Um, and so, you know, hopefully that's that's clear that we, we've done what we said we need to do. We collectively and everybody here needs to do a, a lot more. But but it's really important to demonstrate that, you know, this is 2020, we're in 2020. We are delivering net zero in 2020. We'll be launching a vehicle solutions piece as well in part, you know, in partnership with Attachy Capital um, also next month, um, where every vehicle has the option to be completely net zero. And, and just to reiterate the point, and the objective is to make uh, is to make you know to give people the opportunity to transition um, at a way that's more cost effective, um, i.e., costs you less money uh, than petrol or diesel cars, and we believe that's entirely possible. And in fact, we're going to demonstrate that very soon. And just to kind of add something that we haven't told the world yet, um, but I guess we now have, uh, is our plans, notwithstanding COVID, which makes life a bit more challenging, um, are to have the electric is to have the electric forecourt open, all partners operating, W H Smiths, Costa, Booths. Uh, post office and a number of others um, on the 24th of November, so next month, uh, complete with the whole vehicle solutions offering for net zero transport. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Tonington. That's super, super exciting to see your plans there. I, I very much look forward on the 24th of November to driving my Renault Zoe to the first of the electric forecourts and charging up. I, and I also know you have some great interpretation, some educational materials there, which is a subject close to my heart. So very much looking forward to seeing that. You, you touched on um, technology and, econ and economics there. I, I know for you, um, you're very excited about the fact that um, the economics are now there, the, the, the intersection between the technology and the economics is now such that we're at a point where the kind of work that you're doing is cost effective. Could you could you tell us a little bit more about that side of things, please? Yeah, so I will. I'll, you know, definitely technology, and I thought I'll also add partnership to that. So I mentioned that we work with primarily two technologies, solar energy and energy storage. Um, my, my, my father was building solar energy projects 45 years ago, and a solar panel that he bought at that time was 99.9 .9 something. We worked it out the other day, more expensive than it is today. So what would what would have cost him a pound would cost us less than a pence today for an equivalent watt peak of production. And, and most of that has happened in the last 10 years. And we've reached a point where, you know, where we can make clean energy at a lower cost than, uh, than fossil energy. Uh, and it's when it's reliable, you know, effectively, if, if the sun, you know, the, the fusion reactor in the sky stops working, we won't be worried about solar panels. Um, and, uh, you know, that's really, really important because when you combine that with electric vehicle charging, which is a much lower operating cost, uh, and if you provide it, you know, with the lowest possible energy cost energy source, then you can help really improve the economics, particularly when you finance vehicles as well. You know, and in conjunction with that, the other technology that we, we, we work with um, principally is energy storage, probably an 80% cost reduction in the last, uh, last 10 years, probably more like five years. And the combination of the two together means that you can have energy on demand. Um, you know, from renewable energy whenever you want it at a lower cost. Um, and you can, you, know, you can actually use that energy to power the most critical, uh, critical of applications, which is really, really important. Um, and, you know, it's because we've reached that, 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 that crux uh, in, in technology that we have absolute confidence that we can make it happen. Because for the, for the first time really ever, the economics are on side. It's not like the economics of cli climate change that the Stern Review did many years ago that said that the you know, cost of inaction is going to outweigh cost of action. It's actually that it's less expensive, it's more competitive, you can make more money uh, using these technologies now than the conventional ones. And, 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 and that, that, that gives me hope. Um, uh, just to kind of add a little bit more to it, what also gives us hope is we, I mentioned COVID, we're living in some really tough times um, and, and it is really tough um, for many, many reasons. But actually, you know, out, out of this, um, personally, I, you know, what, what I've seen is, is also an opportunity for hope you know, because the world has moved very, very quickly. 
um, to transform how we act and how we operate. We're having a webinar that wouldn't be happening otherwise, I'm sure, without COVID. You know, and the fact that technology solutions, uh, you know, are, are viable today, that the economics works, you know, combined with the knowledge that actually now people want to make a difference, we really, really can, gives me real hope for the future. Um, I, just, I just want to add a bit more to that in relation to partnership. Um, but only if we form good partnerships and get on with it. We, we, we can't start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. We have to put our head down, we have to crack on. And the only way to do that is if we really align well with, um, with the people we get on with, with really strong partners and we just deliver. Very good, thanks so much indeed. I'll, I'll ask just one final question, Toddington, about delivery. Um, but uh, just a note to our online audience once again, if you have some questions for Toddington, then uh, please do fire those into us and I'll um, ask ask Coddington some of those questions. Um, so yeah, Toddington, I know you're very passionate about the need for action. You talk a lot about delivery. Uh, you, you've outlined some of the incredible endeavors that you're deploying at pace around electric forecourt. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit more about why you think delivery is so important. Yeah, again, reiterating a little bit about, about, about what I said, you know, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has given us unequivocal evidence that if we don't you know, take action now, things are going to get much worse. We're, we're already feeling it, seeing it, the impact of climate change. It, it, it's very, very clear. Um, and the solutions are available to, to deliver the solutions. And, and actually, again, back to David Attenborough's program, there is a window of opportunity to do this and to protect species and to stop extinction and to do, you know, and to preserve our, our, our real existence if we, if we take action now. So, so there isn't really much left to do apart from get on with it. You know, and so that, and that as a concept is something that we're looking to try and enshrine and, you know, hoping others can as well in a very simple concept of hashtag deliver. You know, if, if that could be the, the basis of COP26, if that could be the basis of what we do, you know, it just adds, it adds forward momentum to, 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 to the issues that we're, that we're facing. You know, we don't need to debate it anymore. We don't need to find the solutions. They all exist. We just need to crack on. We need to hashtag deliver. Very good. Um, a question then from our online audience, Junior Isles asks, how long will it take to charge an EV at the electric forecourt? Yeah, so it, it depends on the uh, it depends on the vehicle that you have in the battery. So we've got huge amounts of power. We, we've got a five megawatt grid connection, uh, which could in theory put 20,000 miles of charge into an electric into electric vehicles in an hour. We also have a six megawatt hour battery that can store 24,000 miles of charge and both can work together. So we don't have a shortage about how much how much power we can put into cars. Uh, how much energy we can put in the the uh, the actual ability to, to charge your batteries is controlled by the battery management system that protects the battery from from degradation and so on um, and the good news is is everything is improving we're on a very fast upward curve of higher power um, of higher power uh, you know abilities across multiple vehicles and so in theory at the moment it might take 20 to 30 minutes but in theory we, we're thinking it's not very far away before people will be able to put you know 100 to 200 miles of charge in their vehicle within 10 to 20 minutes. In fact, some vehicles are already able to do that today.